The Invention of Hugo Cabret, Part 2, Chapter 7, The Visit. Soon the children had raised enough money for the old man's medicine, which Isabel bought at the local pharmacy, but it had been a difficult week. Hugo, as he walked through the station, watched the clocks begin to break down. They all had slightly different times. Most terrifying of all, the station inspector had written a note to Hugo's uncle and attached it to the latest paycheck, asking for a face-to-face -face meeting. Hugo didn't know what to do. He just kept praying that he could avoid the station inspector until his questions about the mechanical man had been answered. At last, it was the night before the visit from Etienne and René Tabard. Hugo could hardly fall asleep, and when he did, he dreamed about a terrible accident that occurred in the train station 36 years ago which people still talked about. Hugo had heard stories about the accident from the time he was very young. A train had come into the station too fast. The brakes had failed and the train slammed through the guardrail, guard jumped off the tracks, barreled across the floor of the station, rammed through two walls and flew out the window, shattering the glass into a billion pieces. In his dream, Hugo was walking by himself outside the train station when he heard a loud crash and looked up. A train was falling on him from the sky. Hugo woke in a sweat. Hungry and afraid to go back to sleep, Hugo climbed out of bed and got dressed. He walked down into the train station and stole a bottle of milk. He was happy to find a tray of fresh croissants that had been left unattended near a delivery door. He took a couple of them and hurried back to his room where he ate and waited until it was time for the meeting. It was raining and Hugo arrived just as Etienne and Monsieur Tabard approached with their two black umbrellas. Monsieur Tabard held some kind of large package under his arm. Isabel called to them from the window and met them downstairs on her crutches. Both men closed their umbrellas and shook off the water before moving inside the doorway. Etienne hugged Isabel and she told them all to remove their, their shoes. Papa Georges hates having shoes in the house. Monsieur Tabard said, please tell me again your godfather's full name. Georges Melier, said Isabel. So it's true. He stared at Isabel for a few moments, then caught himself and said, it's very nice to meet you, young lady. I hope this is a good time for our visit. Yes, said Isabel, I think so. Papa Georges is feeling a little better. They are expecting us, are they not? asked Monsieur Tabard. Um, please come upstairs. Isabel asked everyone to wait for a moment in the hallway where Monsieur Tabard put down the large package he was carrying. Then, glancing nervously at Hugo, Isabel entered the apartment. The visitors could hear voices, and finally Isabel returned and brought them inside. Please don't be mad, Mama Jeanne. The old woman had been chopping vegetables and she was holding a very large shiny knife when she turned to see the three visitors enter her home. Her home. Who are these people, Isabel? The knife glinted in the dull light of the apartment. Etienne and Monsieur Tabard took a step backward. Hugo reached inside his wet jacket and took out the book that he had borrowed from the film academy. He handed it to Isabel. We found out who Papa Georges was she said to her godmother. Hugo found this book. It told us about his movies. Monsieur Tabard wrote the book and Etienne is his student. Please, Mama Jean, they want to help. They love Papa Georges films. Monsieur Tabard straightened his bow tie and carefully stepped forward. I deeply apologize. We thought you were expecting us. We will leave immediately and return upon your request. The old woman, realizing she was brandishing a very sharp weapon, hastily put it down and wiped her hands on her apron. Please keep your voices down. My husband is sleeping. I I'm sorry. I... I wish that my goddaughter had told me about your visit because we could have avoided this uncomfortable scene. I'm afraid I will not be inviting you back. Please, Mama Jean, don't make them leave. Madame Melier, I don't want to impose on you, said Monsieur Tabard, but if this is in fact to be the only time we meet, please let me tell you a brief story. 
I met your husband a long time ago when I was a little boy. My oldest brother was a carpenter whom your husband employed on many of his earliest films. He often brought me with him to the studio where the movies were being made. I remember it like I was there just yesterday. I remember sun shone through all the glass. I thought it looked like a palace and a fairy story. One afternoon, your husband appeared and shook my hand, and he said something to me that I've never forgotten. Monsieur Tabard paused for a moment, glanced toward the closed bedroom door, and then continued. He bent down on one knee and whispered to me, If you've ever wondered where your dreams come from, when you go to sleep at night, just look around. This is where they are made. I grew up wanting to make dreams too. Your husband gave me a great gift that day. I hope one day I can repay him. Hugo remembered what his father had said about seeing his first movie as a child. He had said it was like seeing your dreams in the middle of the day. The old woman lifted the bottom edge of her apron and wiped it across her brow. I need to sit down, she said. Etienne brought a chair to her and she sat with a sigh. My husband was an important man, and I am pleased you remember his films with such fondness, but he's become so fragile. It's not a good idea to judge up the past for him. We brought some of that past with us, said Monsieur Tabard, but if you don't think... What did you bring? asked Isabel. The old woman raised her eyebrows. When I was invited here to meet a man I thought had died, I must admit I was skeptical. But stirred by my memories of Georges Méliès, I sent Etienne down to the Film Academy archives, and in the very back, under a pile of old boxes, he found one of your godfather's movies. It's a little dusty, but I think it's in pretty good shape. We brought a projector with us in case he wanted to see it. We figured it might have been a long time since he's seen one of his films. Hugo and Isabel grabbed each other. Show us, said Hugo. No, no, I don't want to wake up Georges, said the old woman. Oh, please, let's watch it now, please, said Isabel. The old woman looked toward the closed door of the bedroom and touched the brooch on her neck. Her eyes shimmered momentarily with curiosity. At least that's what Hugo thought he saw. She covered her eyes with her hands as though the light was too bright. Then she shook her head and said, be quick with it. Monsieur Tabard and Etienne got the package from the hallway and unpacked the projector. They set it up on the table and took out the film reel. Etienne threaded the film through the projector and plugged the machine into an electrical outlet. Hugo closed the curtains. They aimed the projector toward one of the walls and turned it on. It clattered to life, and then the film began moving through it at light, as light burst onto the wall. Images appeared, including Georges Méliès himself as a young man dressed in a fake white beard and a black cape covered with stars and moons. Hugo recognized the designs. When it had fallen out of the box in the armoire, he had thought the black fabric was a blanket. But now Hugo realized it was a costume from the movie A Trip to the Moon. Hugo thought the movie was the most wonderful thing he had ever seen. He imagined his father once upon a time as a little boy sitting in the dark watching this very same movie, staring into the face of the man in the moon. When the film was over, the end of it whipped noisily around and around the take-up reel until Etienne turned off the machine and the rectangle of light disappeared. Everything was silent. But then the floorboards creaked and they all turned. Georges Millier was standing in the bedroom doorway with tears in his eyes. I would recognize the sound of a movie projector anywhere, he said. His wife was crying too. She walked over and put her arm around her husband. Who are these people, he said. Isabel introduced him to Etienne and Monsieur Tabard. Monsieur Tabard teaches at the French Film Academy she said, and Etienne is one of his students. They are fans of yours. The two of them shook his hand. What are they doing here? Isabel explained about the automaton and how Hugo had saved it from the fire. He fixed it, and I'm sorry I did a bad thing. I stole a key from Mama Jean, but Hugo saw the key around my neck and realized 
it would fit the automaton. We wound it up and the machine drew a picture and then we found out everything. Her godfather smiled. Not everything, I'm sure. Hugo reached into his pocket and took out the automaton's drawing, which he had taped back together and handed it to the old man who took it in his shaking hands. Everyone was silent for a long time. Give me the projector, the old man finally said. What? asked his wife. He walked over to the machine and unplugged it. He lifted it up and carried it into his room. Then he shut the door and locked it. That's the end of chapter seven. We'll pick up with chapter eight next time.